welcome to Leatherwood Church. Today is Youth Sunday. The youth will be meeting tonight from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. We will be taking a break from Sunday school again this summer. Sunday school will resume August 23rd. Um, the senior adult classes will still be meeting though. VBS will be held at the MB Presbyterian Church June 14th to the 18th. If you would like to help in any way, please contact Ann or Dodd Kallenberg at 229-5164. Leatherwood will be in charge of services at Broadwood Towers and Edward Heights today. Please see Pastor Doug if you would like to help. Wednesday evening Bible, Bible study picnic June 10th at 6 p.m. at the Bands. Movies at the Bands begins Friday, June 12th at dusk. Bring a blanket or a lawn chair, snack, and drink. Movie is... Mom's Night Out will be move, the movie for the first okay. movies at the Bands. Join us for graduation celebration honoring Samantha Renee Gorley on Sunday, June 28th at 4 p.m. at the Gorley Pavilion um, on 2058 Packing Road. RVSP to 275-4320 by June 14th. Okay. Also, don't, uh, parents of youth, if you could have them here tonight right at 6, uh, we're going to be going up to the dugout for an after uh, end of school party. We're going to go to the dugout in Clarion for ice cream and mini golf, and then we'll be back around 8 o'clock. So youth parents, uh, have them here at 6, and we'll be back here around 8 o'clock. Um, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, Youth Sunday. We're so blessed to be here, uh, to be in your presence. Lord, we thank you for our young people. And Lord, we just uh, pray that uh, we would uh, do everything to honor and glorify you today. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right, do you want to stand and join us in worship this morning?
All right, the youth that have been working hard on some uh, skits and, uh, and some dramatic readings today, this is the first one, uh, and it's called You Gotta Try This. Stop sinning, for there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. Just because other people are doing something does not make it good or right. In our skit, we can laugh because the choices being made were obviously bad. It did not have good outcomes, but the people did it anyway. If you're hanging out with the wrong kind of people, you may not be quick to see things as clearly as you should and may give in to their wishes for you to do something you know is wrong. Don't give in. Uh, keep to the good character, come back to your senses, and stop hanging out with people who are making wrong choices and pressuring you to do the same. Let them be ignorant of God wants, let them be ignorant of what God wants for their life on their own. In the meantime, you have some wise choices to make and some new friends to find. We can have the ushers come forward for the morning ties and offerings. That's great. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. And Lord, as we uh, uh, get ready to give our tithe and our offering to you as an act of worship, Father, we pray that we would do so with a cheerful heart and a, and a giving spirit. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. And we ask that you would bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Anybody else have a praise? Yes, Leroy. Okay. Anybody else? How about prayer requests this morning? Um, anybody else with a prayer request? Yes, Jim. Them, I once again vomit on the carpet. Today, 
Today, I decapitated a mouse and dropped its headless body at their feet. I hope that this would strike fear in their hearts, and since it clearly demonstrates what I am capable of. However, they really made consenting comments about what a good little hunter I am. I am a vicious killer and should not be trifled with. Oh, 3 p.m. Back in my tail, my favorite thing. 5 p.m. Eight milk bugs, also one of my favorite things. 7 p.m. Peed on a tree, my favorite thing. Cat! There were some, <laughs> there were some sort of assembly of their accomplices tonight. I was placed in solitary confinement for the duration of the event. However, I could hear the noise and smell the food. I also heard, overheard that my confinement was due to the power of something called allergies. <laughs> I must learn what this means and how to use it to my advantage. Dog, 7.30 p.m. Got to play with the ball. My favorite thing. 7.30 p.m. Got to pee on a tire. My favorite thing. 10 p.m. Sleeping on a bed. My favorite thing. Cat. Today, I was almost successful in an attempt to assassinate one of my tormentors by leaving him at his feet as he was walking. I must try this again tomorrow, but at the top of the stairs this time. <laughs> I'm convinced that the other prisoners here are flunkies and snitches. The dog receives special privileges. He is regularly released and seems to be more than willing to return. He is obviously mentally challenged. <laughs> the bird has got to be an informant. I observe him communicate with the guards regularly. I am certain that he reports my every move. My captors have arranged protective custody for him and an elevated cell. He is safe for now. But I will have my revenge on these people soon enough. situation and see it so differently. After all, if you've owned a pet, you know this, that they're basically your baby. They're, you know, you take care of them as you would a child and you love them to death and, and, and they spend time uh, being loved by you. But they don't see it the same way. Now, I know some of you are cat people. I like cats. And I know that not all cats are like this. I know that not, not all dogs are man's best friend, but if you've owned them and you've watched them, you can tell that there is definitely a difference. After all, a dog wants to do whatever you want to do with it. Isn't that, isn't that true? Whether you want to take it for a walk, he's willing to go. Whether you want to play ball, he's ready to go. Whether you want to sleep in the bed, he'll nap right there beside you. A cat, when you go to show love to a cat, you love a cat on its terms. There's no, you know, making it play catch. There's no making it, you know, fetch something. When it wants love, it will come to you. And only then does it want love. And they enjoy time to themselves. But a dog is always there. And they say that it has to be within eight feet of its owner to feel love. And so my dog lays at my feet most of the time or on my lap when it can get up on the couch. And we know these pets have it made, but do you know something else? We as Christians have it made. We have it pretty good. We, God has provided us with everything we needed to live, and, he, and He's promised us in the future that He's going to provide a perfect living environment. And we often take this for granted. I know many people who call themselves Christian have this all figured out. They're the ones that are smiling all the time. And, and they're the ones that are, that are humming an old hymn uh, back and forth. Uh, and, and it's going around in their head. And they're the, they're the ones that, that seem to be having joy in all circumstances. It's almost like they have an outlook like the dogs had in our illustration. That whatever, whatever's happening today, it's going to be my favorite thing. And then there are, there are what I like to call the cat Christians. They seem miserable and grumpy. 
They can only seem to do things if they get something out of it. And they don't want to be around others all the time. They want to be left to themselves unless it's beneficial to them. Now, both of these individuals, they have the same promises given to them. They call themselves Christian. They claim, claim, they claim the, the promise of an eternal home in heaven and salvation on earth. So what's the difference? The difference is in their attitude. This morning in, in Philippians chapter 2, in the first 11 verses, it talks about our attitudes and how they are shaped in this life and, and, and how we can be more pleasurable and more pleasing. And, and, and we want to be like the dog in the example. Now, I'm not saying that dogs are better than cats, except that they are. But, uh, but how do we get there? If, if we're more like a cat Christian as opposed to a dog Christian, how do we, how do we grow in our attitudes? Uh, I want to read together from Philippians chapter 2, Verses 1 through 11. And it says this. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, in be, in, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by being obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. There's a, a couple of things in this scripture that I want to touch on briefly, but before we do that, I'm going to ask Larry, would you open us with a word of prayer? So the first thing that we have to look at in this scripture, what makes up a good attitude? This is what the, the, the beginning of the scripture says again. It says, therefore, if we have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. So, when we are united in Christ, when we receive our salvation, we want to, we are to use that salvation as motivation and as encouragement and use the comfort of His love and the Holy Spirit to make something better of ourselves. And that's our whole selves. And it's the way that we act, the way that we think, the way that we talk, even down to the attitude that we have. And so those better things, those, that, those pieces of our attitude are this as listed in the scripture. We're to be like-minded. We give up our ideas for the ideas of the Holy Spirit. We're to have the same love in us that Christ had for the church. We're to be unified in spirit and mind for the common goals of God's kingdom. We're to, to get rid of selfish ambition and vain conceit. And then we humbly value others above ourselves by looking to their interests first. Now, these are not easy changes. 
These are radical changes that, that, that make up the core of who we think that we are. How many of you have heard the excuse? Well, it's not my fault. God made me this way. Mm. No, sin made you this way. God is wanting to make you into something better to rise up above what you could be on your own. After how many of us would like to remain a cat? When we want love, we come find love. When we want uh, something else, we come get it. We make the demands. We work on our own schedule. But we can't just stay there. Jesus called us to be saved out of our old selves. And that requires every piece down to even our attitude. And he gave us a plan. Also in the scripture, we find out that there's someone that we're to model ourselves after. And it seems like a Sunday school answer to, to say this, but we're to, to model our attitudes after the ones that Jesus Christ had. Paul says it this way in our scripture. He said, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Now, this is out of the newer the new international version, the new one they come out with it. And some of the older versions of scripture, the, the, the word mindset is translated as attitude. You're to have the same attitude, the same way of thinking, the same mindset as Christ Jesus. We're to think like he did. Did Jesus only think of himself or did he concern himself with others? All the time, he was moved with compassion. He was going with the crowds. He was doing things for other people. He went around healing them and ministering them when he was at his lotus. And I, and I think of this, and even when he knew they were going to kill him, he still healed them. He still ministered to them. He still raised them up. Jesus was always praying things like, not my will, Father, but yours be done. He gave his own life as a ransom for many because of his love for the people. And this is the attitude that we're to take on as we go about our, our, our daily walk. So how do we get there? Because when you say you're to have the same attitude as that of Jesus Christ and then go on to say, like, you know, remember like when he died for all of you? That seems like a lot to ask. And so we start putting one foot in front of the other to, to obtain the attitude of Christ. This is what it says in our, in our scripture. He said, in your relationships with one another, have the same attitude as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by being obedient to death, even death on the cross. There are two things that, that will, will help us to take the next step in having an attitude like Jesus Christ. And the first one is this. We need to get it out of our head that we're somehow just a little bit below God. Or maybe even on par with him. And after all, remember back to Adam and Eve. What was their first sin? They ate the apple, right? That's what we think of. They ate the apple. But why did they eat the apple? The servant told them. He lied to them. He said, surely if you eat of this fruit, you will not die. You will become like God. So the temptation was not with the fruit. The temptation in their mind was that they would become like God if they would eat this. And so out of that desire to become a God or like God, they ate of the fruit. Something went fuzzy in their mind. After all, how much of all that was around them and they had a hand in creating? Adam could lay claim to one rib in Eve. And Adam created the names for the animals. That's it. God did the rest. And so how could they even think that they would be anywhere close to God? But they believed it in their heads. And we do the same thing. When we believe that God's plans are too weird or too strange and our plans are somehow better. 
We put ourselves on the same plane as God. And it sounds crazy, but that's what happens every time we don't surrender completely to His will. To have His attitude starts with a complete surrender. And getting it through our mind that we're not God. And once that is complete, we need to do one more thing. We need to become a servant like Jesus did. We need to get out and start serving people. We need to start putting ourselves in a position to, to help others and to fill their needs. That's why this summer, uh, the youth in July are going to be taking a, a mission trip to Blue Knob, Pennsylvania, just outside of Altoona. And they're going to be helping families with construction projects and, and getting their hands dirty. And, and are, are they going to be preaching the gospel? Not really. Except with their actions. And through their works of service, they're also going to be working on their attitude. Anyone have a teenager with attitude problems? None of you in here. <laughs> but as we serve, something changes inside of us. As we, as we seek to, 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 to put a roof on someone's house that we don't even know. And that act of service works on our attitude. And gets us to be more like Christ. So if these families need a new roof or porch, we'll build them one. If they need help with landscaping or yard work, we'll do that. We'll be serving our fellow man, and in the meantime, we'll be working on our attitudes to make them more Christ-like. Uh, we have a little video to, to show you some of the things that they're, they're going to be doing. Christ-like and, and more uh, pleasing to their fellow men, uh, our youth, we've asked them to raise the support for half of their trip. This is something new to them. They haven't been asked to do this before, and, and about half of the trip is about $175, and that's why they've been, been selling the, the, the 31 bags. And But today, they're pledging to you four to six hours of work and they're doing it to the highest bidder. So they will come and serve you at your house, do whatever projects you have for them to do for four to six hours. 
and uh, we're going to have a little bit of a youth auction for that service that will help get stuff done around your house and will help them get ready for the trip that they're going to take and will help them to raise some, some funds. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We have six individuals who are willing to, to be auctioned 